When your CANSAT has landed safely and you've saved all the data in files, the next step is to analyze that data and present graphs and explain to people what was happening there. So in this video, I'm going to have a look at importing your files into Excel and using some of the features of Excel to produce nice graphs. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to use the file that of data I collected when I was testing the pressure sensor. And we're going to use Excel to show how it can help uh, interpret that data. Here's the data in that I captured using cool term of the pressure from the four locations. So now I want to take that into Excel. So I'm going to close that. And I'm going to open a new Excel file here. To import the data, I'm going to click on data from text. I'm going to find my file of data and click import. Then there are various options here. Uh, you might click on delimited if your data is separated by commas. Mine is in columns, so it's easy enough. And you can just watch that the data is, is separated properly. Click next. And general data format is fine. Finish. Then it's asked me where I want to put it. I'm going to maybe start it here to allow me to have space above and along the sides for titles on columns and rows. And there we go, there's our, our data. So next thing I want to do is tidy up this data and then draw some nice graphs. So to do that, um, I'm going to erase a couple of columns. So I'll click on that, click Delete. Again, I'll get rid of this. So we'll get rid of all the clutter on the screen. And I might also get rid of that one. I put a couple of titles here, so this is thermistor voltage. And we'll put in brackets that it's in volts. Turn um, might widen the column a bit. And I'll use the wrap feature, wrap text, so that it's neater. And then here this is that converted to temperature to say temp, and that's in degrees Celsius. So then I can get rid of this column as well. We don't need a whole row of column of Cs. And this here was our pressure, and that was in millibars. OK. Make that a little bit wider. And I'm going to delete this column entirely. To delete a full column, I need to do it this way. OK, so now there's our data. And maybe I'll just make that red. And we might make this column blue, just to make it easier to see what we're doing. OK, so I want to draw a graph. So I'm going to draw a graph of pressure versus time, really. So let's graph the pressure. So I'm going to highlight this whole column. I'm going to go Insert. And there's all types of graphs you can choose. Um, I'm going to go with a scatter graph of this type. So there we have a basic graph. So this is OK. It shows us the pressure at the four different locations where I took samples. There are drops here because I didn't, I didn't continuously sample. I stopped and started when I moved locations. So that all looks OK. But it isn't very well labeled or, or clear. So let's see, can we improve on that? I'd like to change that title so that it gives more useful information. So I'm going to click on this. And I might change it to maybe pressure at four locations. Okay. Then the axis, we always need to have units. Never have just numbers, not saying what they are. So again, I click on the chart. The chart tools comes up. And I get to layout. And I'd like to change the axis titles. I'll click over here. So we'll edit the vertical axis title first. I'm going to go with this type. So I come in here, and I can move around and try to edit this. So we're going to call that, um, they're just millibars. You might actually want to convert those to Pascal 
um, the SI unit. So I'm going to call that pressure in millibars. Okay. So that's the horizontal axis. Now along the, sorry, that's the vertical axis. Along the horizontal axis, it's giving me sample numbers here because I didn't actually ask it to plot two things. Um, it would be nicer if it gave time, maybe. Now, I know that my samples were taken every five seconds. So let's have a look at how we might put that into the graph. So maybe if I was to put another column into my data here, and I might call it sample time, time, and we'll have those in seconds. Now, I'm going to put in my sample times here. So the first sample is at time zero. Um, next one is at time five. And I could keep going 10, 15, but we can do it more easily if we just highlight those two and then drag this and Excel will automatically increment by five. It'll just follow the pattern that I've started there. So we we'll get down to the end and there are all the times in. So to do this, I'm now going to do a graph of this versus this. So I'm going to highlight the first column keep the control key pressed and highlight the second one. Right, so I go to insert, select my graph, click on it here, and here's our new graph. So this time, you'll notice that the units are going from 0 to 500, so that's 0 to 500 seconds. So again, I need to tidy this up, um, so I'll use the layout here and sort out the axis titles again. Um, so our horizontal axis this time put in and I'll title it sample time and in brackets I'll just put seconds so you know there are seconds the vertical axis Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this little thing here. I don't think that's adding anything for us. And let's make this a little bigger. So now our graph is pretty good. For the purposes of doing a presentation with this, though, it might be nice to give a little bit more information um, to the user. So we have units down the side, which is great, and saying what they are. And over here, we're stating what we're measuring and the units. But um, to explain it a little better, I might like to add a few little comments on here. For example, it'd be nice to explain that this is at what location it's at, and this one, and this one, and this one. So to do that, I might come in here and go back to home, insert, and what I'd like to do is insert a text box. So I've said insert text box. I'm going to put one here. Sorry, I'll just leave that for a second. Text box. And I'll say location one, comma, sea level. So maybe it'd be nice to have that in red. And I make the box a little smaller. Might make the text a little bigger. And then we could move it up here. Yeah, I maybe put a couple of little arrows on it. And again, I can make that red, maybe make it a bit stronger, and put another one here. So now I have two titles in now, and you can see that I could continue on with that. This chart could then be moved into PowerPoint, if you liked, to um, 
help make part of your presentation. And you could use some of the features of PowerPoint, maybe some animations or flying arrows to demonstrate points. The objective, remember, is to help your audience interpret the data that you have found. So you want to be able to explain, say, why did the temperature rise here, or why was there a sudden drop in atmospheric pressure here. It's all about explaining and understanding the data.